So I've been preparing for the last four or five months to go on my new solve. I was waiting until August or September because my solve required me to cross over a river. And I know that in August and September, the rivers in my location were lower and than they are in the spring. And so I also knew that after Labor Day, uh, school would be started and there would be a lot less people there. So that was part of my uh, plan on picking that time frame. So I had got a new project at work and I got it the day after Labor Day uh, this year. And I immediately told my bosses, like, I, I need to take the rest of the week off. I can start on the new project Monday. And I have worked for a great company that allowed me to take that time off. And I packed my bags. This was a Thursday. I packed my bags uh, and left Thursday night, uh, 10 o'clock at night, and drove 17 hours. I stopped and slept a little bit. I uh, ate um, 17 hours to the new location. I'm going to show you some of that video now. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm uh, in Utah driving to my find to look for Farston's treasure. I came. I found this solve probably five months ago and I've been working on it ever since and I've been waiting till after Labor Day to come out here so it's two days after Labor Day and I'm all, I'm about four hours away over the last couple of weeks I've been asking myself is this the right solve am I wasting my time is this I don't think it's right so many things are right, but I don't know that precise location. I don't know that precise location the Forest Fit talks about in, uh, in the book. But now that I'm in Utah and I'm a few hours away, I'm starting to get those flutterbys in my stomach. Or butterflies, which is it? So... that tingly feeling what if I find it what if it's actually there what if I actually what if my solve is the solve so we'll see got about 25 miles to go at 45 miles an hour and I'm um, starting uh, to un get, get a little nervous I see a lot of a lot of juniper bushes. I wonder if I see any pinion trees. I have a feeling that's going to be part of the solve. Um, so I uh, waited till after Labor Day. It's um, Wednesday after Labor Day 2017. And there's nobody here. This place is dead. And that is exactly why I uh, came at this time on Wednesday. Uh, so that gives me a th all day tomorrow. Uh, I expect to probably be by myself. Um, wow, you look at this, guys. Hold on one second, look at this. I'll have to catch it on the backside when we come back around. Beautiful, uh, beautiful out here. Here it is. Okay, got about 25 miles to go at 45 miles an hour, and I'm um, starting uh, to un get, get a little nervous. I see a lot of, a lot of juniper bushes. I wonder if I see any pinion trees. I have a feeling that's going to be part of the solve. Um, so I uh, waited till after Labor Day. It's um, Wednesday after Labor Day 2017, 
and there's nobody here. This place is dead, and that is exactly why I uh, came at this time on Wednesday. Uh, so that gives me a th all day tomorrow. Uh, I expect to probably be by myself. Um, wow, you know, look at this, guys. Hold on one second, look at this. I have to catch it on the backside when we come back around. Beautiful, uh, beautiful out here. Here it is. Okay, whether I'm going to be able to find it or not, yet to be seen. I'm going to give it a college effort. I've got pretty much all day tomorrow, hopefully by myself out there. Uh, Friday as well. It's supposed to rain Friday, which I think raining, you know, far said in his book. I went to uh, in, in important literature, important, important literature. You need to read it, know it. He said in there, one day when it was raining, I went to Borders. Sorry, I'm trying to drive here. Uh, I've got a Toyota Corolla. I'm a little bit nervous. It's recommended high clearance vehicles. Um, it's recommended not going at all when it's raining. Um, you don't really want to go on that road. So I did watch a YouTube video of someone um, taking that road. So I have seen it on YouTube video and it looks like I'm going to be okay. I think I'll probably be safe. But uh, you know, you never know. Everybody on the travel site said to uh, said to um, high clearance vehicles. So we're gonna see if I. If it's getting dark, so if I don't get in there tonight, I'm gonna have to park and kind of camp it somewhere. We'll see. But all right, guys, I'll uh, talk at you whenever I get there. Bye. Well morning one made it here last night god forest you hung your you hid your treasure in a beautiful place so let's go find it come on going to get it So, I'm heading to my solve, and as you can see, I'm up on a little cliff here. And I think this is what Forrest was talking about whenever he was saying there was an easier way to do that. When he was talking about jumping through the window and get it to get out of his uh, teacher's room. I think that's why he meant jumping off this thing here. Because there's a much easier way to take that trail. That after I climbed all the way up this mountain for that I believe Forrest was leading to. So I think he played a little trick on me here. Um, or all of us. And I fell for it. So I'm going to. Because I didn't bring a new rope. To tie around the stool. Of Betsy's leg. Like. Or to tie around the stool. That he sat on when he was milking Betsy. And he fell. Remember. There. That's what I would do. I would tie a rope, a new rope, right? Because Sheriff told you to bring a new rope because he's going to hang you with a new rope instead of an old one. And remember, the teacher had a rope with knots on it. Yeah. Tie it around that tree and it would definitely break on me and I'd fall just like Betsy did. So I'm going to backtrack. Hey guys, I made it. I made it to myself. I've got this area to search. I believe I'm within 500 feet of the treasure. 
I'm going to get within five feet of it. Um, wow. Talk about being alone. I am alone in here. Um, it's interesting. I didn't stop and take pictures or anything as I was coming in. But, uh, remember Forrest talking about uh, stinking, stinking creek. There was some mud that was pretty stinky. Um, belly high grass. I made it through the belly high grass. I uh, found that. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take a break, drink some water, have a little bit of lunch, and then get to it. Talk to you later. Hey guys, it's uh, 7.44, I'm back at the campground, didn't find it, but I am more convinced that it is here than I have ever been. Uh, I left this morning, campground about 9 o'clock, and um, made it to, um, I saw the previous videos about, about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes. It was only about a mile, maybe a mile and a half. Um, and it wasn't challenging. Maybe it was a little bit more. Maybe it was a couple of three miles. But um, yeah, anyway, I'll have to look at it on the map. But I, um, I went in there and didn't really know what to expect. It was all different from what I'd seen and expected on uh, Google Earth. And... It's, uh, I spent probably two hours, two and a half, three hours uh, climbing and looking at different things, trying to find it, and finally uh, I found what I was looking for. I found, um, yeah, well, what I was looking for, and but I had kind of set up a base camp, if you will, and all my compass and all my everything, I'd only had a bottle of water, so all my goods were you know probably a half mile away maybe not far maybe a quarter mile and um i was out of water so you got my bottled water here and i had that one bottle that one liter i had two liters with me on the walk and the other one was you know down to probably a quarter and i'd taken a full one with me and after the two and a half hours i'd gone through that so i was out of water i didn't have my filtration system on me i didn't take it with me um I didn't, didn't quite expect uh, some of the challenges I ran into, uh, so I used a little bit more resources and water than I had wanted, but um, started headed back, got back to camp, uh, it took me an hour and 40 minutes uh, to leave, to get back, um, easily doable, there and back twice in a day, uh, if, if I knew where I was going, right, tomorrow, um, I'm going to walk right to it. I think I can probably make it right to where I need to be. I'm going to uh, use a lot less energy, a lot less resources. I know where I'm going now. Um, definitely somewhere an 80-year-old man can go um, without any type of uh, risk, really, besides the slip and fall, uh, which happens anywhere. So I uh, came back here, and I've been back at camp. I ate and got rehydrated and been thinking and looking through my notes and I got my throw chase and too far to walk books and um, I'm getting up pretty early in the morning probably before daybreak five o'clock or so I'll, I'll probably get up and uh, I'm gonna start going in I know exactly where I'm going uh, I've read my book here I know exactly where I'm going um, if I get there Am I going to find what I expect to see? I don't know. Um, but I'm going to go there. I'm taking, uh, I'm leaving the books here this time because, you know, they were heavy. Forrest did not kidding when he made those books. But um, I'm going to take plenty of water with me. I'm going to take my filtration system. I'm going to take um, a dinner. 
for it to eat. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and I, if I find it, then I'm gonna have to dip everything in my case that I'm carrying with me and put those where the head in the chest is and get the chest and bring it on out by itself. I'm not looking forward to that, but um, you know what? It's worth it. All right. Anyway, talk to you tomorrow, guys. Bye. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, 7:45. I'm at that precise location. Is the treasure here? I left camp about six o'clock this morning, so it took me an hour and 45 minutes. Came straight here. Is that it? Do I need to crawl on my belly? Go in there and look? I do. Guys, want to let you my phone died uh, out there while I was out there, so I could not uh, record anymore or take any more pictures. I did not find the treasure, as I said in my last vlog number one. I have not found it yet. Um, I still think it's out there. Still going to give you some more clues still going or i shouldn't say clues i'm still going to give you my opinion on what i think these two books mean so let's talk a minute about the preface in um excuse me i said preface in vlog number one i meant to say the foreword written by doug preston in once upon a while so I mentioned in vlog number one that there was some controversy um, over what that statement meant that Fulwin Farr said he was going to park his car at the, Mash, uh, the History Museum of Nature and Science in Denver, Colorado. And then there is audio, or I guess video, whatever you want to say, of him, uh, Douglas, saying that Forrest told him he was going to park his car at the air... Arizona, University of Arizona in Phoenix. Um, I, I could be wrong. I'm, I don't think it's really that important. What I do think is important is to know that it doesn't matter, right? Who cares if Douglas, if he's lying, right? He's playing the game. Forrest is telling him to play the game. I don't think he, Douglas is going looking for the treasure, right? Um, and Maybe Forrest told him one thing, and then maybe Forrest told him a second thing. And so Douglas, like our president, he just makes stuff up, right? He just changed it. Does it matter? Don't think it matters, guys. What matters is he told us one thing, right? Then he told us number two. What does that mean? Somebody said it. Either Douglas said it or Forrest said it to Douglas, who then told us. I think you would be very um, wise to look at what's common between the two. Why would Forrest want to park his car one? You know what I really think? I think Forrest told him that. I think that that meant something. I don't think it was very clear to people, and I think they overlooked it and ignored it as, a, as something to pay attention to. So now, years later, Forrest has changed it up. He's made it a little bit more obvious. As soon as I heard it, I cringed because, as I said, I don't think it's a hint. It's not a hint. Don't look at it as a hint. But if you're on the trail, if you're on the right track, it is 100% confirmation. And if you look at the University of Arizona, that too would be confirmation just it's a little bit harder to tell. Look at what's common between the two. Uh, hopefully the next vlog I will have my new copy of uh, Once Upon a While that I can do a book review on. Until then, comment below, like, subscribe. Thanks guys.